Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a very interesting resolution of an ancient supernova mystery that happened around 850 years ago. A supernova that was very likely created by an extremely interesting process known as Type 1AX supernova, which actually results in what's known as a zombie star. But interestingly, all of the data about the supernova actually comes from some of the writings from ancient China and from ancient Japan. And so because of this, this is actually a pretty interesting discovery and a pretty interesting study. So let's talk a little bit more about this, starting with the idea of so-called guest stars. This is what the ancient Chinese astronomers would usually refer to when they saw some sort of a formation in the night skies that resembled a new star that would then disappear after a few weeks or a few months. And in most cases, these gas stars refer to what we today call supernova, although in some cases they were much smaller events known as nova, and in other cases they would be typical comets. So these gas stars were pretty well known to ancient astronomers, and to some extent were also used by ancient Japanese and Chinese astronomers to sort of try to predict various events and to use them in various prophecies. And because of their importance, a lot of these ancient descriptions were actually pretty accurate in terms of describing their appearance, describing their location in the night skies, and most importantly, describing how long these events lasted, which today can technically be used to determine a lot of the properties of these particular events. Now, one of these events happened in 1181 AD, with the first observations being around August 5th, and at least eight different texts officially describe this particular event providing quite enough detail to establish what sort of a supernova this most likely was. And by the way, this is actually only one of eight official ancient supernova that was officially observed with a naked eye and was quite thoroughly described in some of the texts. We'll talk about some of the other ones in some of the future videos. And so some of the early descriptions allow the scientists to sort of pinpoint the approximate location of this event specifically pointing at this beautiful nebula you see right here, known as 3C58. And this nebula clearly had some sort of a pulsar on the inside. You can even see this X-ray image showing us how the pulsar wind is pushing out a lot of the materials from both sides. But the thing is, when the scientists looked at this pulsar in more detail, they realized it spins pretty fast. It spins about 50 times per second. And because this would be about 850 years old, the scientists assume that by now it should really be spinning much slower. So basically here, something didn't really add up. Either the pulsar was breaking laws of how the pulsars are created, or maybe something entirely different was happening in this region, or more importantly, maybe this wasn't actually the correct location. And so for a few years now, this was actually a really big mystery, with the mystery suggesting that our model of formation of neutron stars might not be entirely correct. But some scientists were not happy with this, and so they kept looking for something else in the night skies. And the scientists behind the recent paper you can find in the description below might have finally discovered where the supernova actually came from and provided just enough answer to satisfy everyone. So, for example, based on the original description from the Chinese astronomers, they established that the supernova's total brightness was equivalent to the brightness of planet Saturn, even a little bit brighter than that. And they also established that it was visible for approximately 6 months, 185 days. And because of this, they were able to work out the total energy produced during the supernova, and even sort of work out the approximate distance to this object as well. More importantly, they were able to pinpoint the more accurate location of the supernova based on these early descriptions from the Chinese astronomers. And as you can see from the small map they created in their study, the actual description seems to point at the location right here, and though it does include that poster I mentioned before, it also includes this other region known as Parker 30 or PA30. And this particular region is quite interesting. It includes this really interesting nebula that was discovered not so long ago, that's already pretty big in size, and also contains a lot of particles and a lot of winds, expanding at a speed of about 1100 kilometers per second, something that the scientists have only recently been able to calculate. And so by using the combination of total speed, and also by knowing the total size of the object, they could technically work out when all of this started, or essentially when this particular nebula was originally produced. And it just so happens that it seems to have an age of about 850 years, naturally coinciding with the supernova seen by the ancient astronomers. And so the fact that it's located in the right area and seems to be the right age only suggests 
that it's really this nebula right here that produced the original observation from 1181. So I guess mystery solved. But here's the kicker. This particular supernova or this particular remnant was actually created by an extremely interesting star that was originally described back in December of 2020, one of the most interesting supernova ever discovered. There are a few studies about this and you can find them in the description below, but in a nutshell, in the middle of this object there seems to be one of the hottest, if not the hottest, stars in the galaxy we've found so far. The star that's currently referred to as the Parker star. And this strange hot object is also a result of an extremely rare event, an extremely powerful event. An event that results in what's known as the zombie star. We normally refer to these as type 1 AX supernova. One of the older videos on the channel explains this in a little bit more detail. In a nutshell though, this type of an object is made when two white dwarfs that are usually not too massive collide creating an extremely massive, extremely fast spinning and extremely powerful object. An object that instead of disappearing and exploding like a normal type 1a supernova, ends up staying as an actual star that spins extremely fast and is also sometimes referred to as the Super Chandrasekhar object. Interestingly, it's really only in the last few years that we've started discovering these unusual objects, with one of the first ones being this one right here, located in a galaxy known as NGC 1309. And so the resulting star resembles what's usually known as the wolf Rayet star. It's extremely bright, very emissive, produces tons and tons of X-ray radiation, and also is not particularly stable. It's very likely going to either completely explode and disappear, or initiate some sort of a type 1 supernova in the next 10,000 years or so. But because this particular star was only discovered a few months ago from when I'm making this video, and also because we don't really know enough about these events just yet, this is probably one of the most exciting discoveries in the last few years when it comes to ancient supernova, or when it comes to understanding type 1ax supernova and, of course, the zombie stars. And don't forget, the star itself is already quite extreme. It seems to be one of the hottest stars we've discovered. It also seems to be approximately 1.5 masses of the sun, or basically way above the limit where a typical white dwarf could exist. And so in this case, even a tiny deviation from its spin or its rotation might actually cause the star to go supernova even earlier. So in other words, it's an extremely unstable star that could technically create another supernova in the not so distant future. And it has a few other records as well. It's an extremely unusual X-ray source. It also has extremely fast wind speeds compared to some of the other supernova at least the supernova that are 850 years old, and it seems to have a large amount of neon, magnesium, silicon, and sulfur, a lot of which is somewhat difficult to explain. So this is an exotic event, definitely not something we see a lot of, and is definitely one of the most interesting recent discoveries. But because it's about 9,000 or almost 10,000 light years away from us, it's still kind of far away to study this in more detail, and even if it goes supernova, it's still not going to be easily visible. Nevertheless, this presents a perfect opportunity to study these unusual events, where we can actually study both the remnant nebula, the merged star, and also see the explosion itself. So when it comes to supernova, this is definitely one of the most interesting discoveries. And at the same time, this also makes this particular region and this particular star the most likely candidate to go supernova next in our own galaxy. But when exactly this happens is of course a question we cannot answer. Mostly because we don't really understand these particular zombie stars really well yet, and we don't really know what happens inside of them. But we might in the next few years. And so until we learn something else, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.